and it ran for about a week and all of a sudden the engine light comes back on well the first thing I did was to take out the the motor figuring that since that's the part that had to be repaired took out the motor to see uh, what was going on and you could smell it it uh, shorted and uh, you know the little wire that was on the one tap apparently shorted over to the other windings or something so anyway I decided to take it apart now that we've got no um, anything to lose uh, you'll see where I, you have to get the impeller off to get the back of the motor off I don't know if you can see that we'll see it here in just a minute okay there's the motor and it's mounted to this frame here and then this is pressed on and you can't get anything up underneath there to pop it out or anything so you're going to need some sort of a puller I did not have a puller small enough so I put in two screws as small as I could you'll see these little um, indentions here and I made them about that size and just drilled a hole through there and then found a screw that would go in there and fit and each time you do it you know you, you, you get them down to where they're starting to hit when they start to hit you do the other one then you go from one to the other one like a quarter of a turn one to the other one quarter of a turn otherwise if you keep turning the one it's going to bust and then you're in a world of hurt now uh, the way this thing was designed it took about four of these things because every time I get in there and it start to kind of give a little bit the casing was curved and I would have to pull the thing out and then you can see where the screw was bent but uh, so you don't want to go too too hard but it, yeah it's, it's in there pretty tight unless you've got a puller an actual good puller that will work uh, this is just another way once again you get you start to bottom out it's a quarter turn quarter turn quarter turn quarter turn you just keep doing that and watch it you may also have to kind of tap on it a little bit to you know maybe bump it off but it does come off so I just put these in there temporarily so you can see it and here is when we pulled off we've got four bolts I got two of them in here just to show you uh, one two three four it's pressed on that little spindle that's all it holds okay now we got the motor back here all right so I'm gonna see if I can't leave the torque screws also uh, well fingers must have been tight all right anyway when I opened it up even the first time I saw okay all these numbers on here all right the reason why I took this off was just simply to see if there's any more numbers that uh, could identify this motor all right now I know they've used these motors for something else okay and um, this is oh, by the way this has been up because I thought maybe there might be some more hidden numbers underneath there but there's not so anyway I have looked for a bit to try to find these things I can I can find the part number for the entire for the entire assembly or just the motor and the cap the cap without the uh, rubber mount uh, situation here so anyway what I did was uh, I unplugged the, the motor of course and I also unplugged the diaphragm unplug those two things the light stays on but remember uh, the diaphragm that I had it, it is a normally closed diaphragm in other words it does not allow air to leak through it so if it stays closed I see no reason why it couldn't just go ahead and run if it opened up then it would be doing something else we probably have a rough running engine uh, so anyway I've got them both unhooked and uh, the, the, I've been running it for about two weeks now. I don't see any kind of difference. I've never really checked the mileage on it, but it's not like it's, you know, uh, suddenly gone down, you know, a great deal. So I'm going to say that it's okay for now. What I'm going to do, I don't know. I may just leave it out. Uh, another piece of black tape over the <laughs> over the gauge, just like the tire indicator, and uh, we'll be set. So anyway, uh, sorry for the long windedness, but. Um, Hopefully you got an idea of how these things come apart, what to do, what not to do. Learn from my mistakes. All right. If you think you're going to be able to keep this, or find, if you do find a motor for it, just be sure not to break this. Like I say, this whole thing is going to come as an assembly from anywhere, I don't know, uh, 500 bucks, we'll say. Uh, three, three to 500. All right. So anyway, I was just going to try and save uh, that, <laughs> that expensive thing just because of that silly little motor. Okay, so anyway, good luck on uh, your endeavors, and uh, hope yours turns out as well as mine, or what I think mine is. Uh, that's it. Everybody have a nice one. Bye. I did forget one thing. When I was going through uh, uh, doing uh, searches, I found that there is a, a bypass, or not a bypass, 
well I guess it is, is a bypass kit and all it is is a couple of wires that hooks into where the fan is and to where that other diaphragm is uh, don't ask me what it's got inside of it it's like a, a tarred over little box it might be nothing but anyway <clears throat> supposedly it will clear the engine light <clears throat> as long as you disconnect the battery to clear the code so you can put this put it in its in its place there's uh, several of them I saw one of them were like hardwired where you had to strip down the wires and wire nut them and what have you another one had apparently had the actual plug into it where all you had to do was plug it into the motor and plug it into the uh, into the uh, diaphragm uh, solenoid and it works so I have not seen uh, I've not tried it or I don't know what I'm going to do they run about 175 to 200 bucks so anyway it's a lot cheaper and uh, the decision of course uh, if, if you're in a uh, state that has inspections you're pretty well screwed so yeah, I live in a state where we don't have those uh, nuisance inspections anymore and uh, I'm probably going to leave it like it is alright once again take care